We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings, the first we find in 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now to honor the risen Christ in our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Humanity coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn this lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like the man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I will say to all, keep awake. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nate. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of surprise, we wait for you with expectant hearts and anxious souls. During this season of anticipation, teach us what it means to be ready for your arrival in our lives in this in-between time of each new day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome to a new year in the life of the church. No, don't worry, I'm not confused. Well, maybe I am normally, but not, not on this anyway. I mean, I know it's December 3rd today, but uh, it's not January 1st yet. Thank the Lord for that, because I'm not ready for Christmas or January 1st yet myself. But we're getting there. It's getting close. What I mean is this morning is welcome to the official beginning of a new year in the life of the church. A whole new year for us to proclaim the story of Christ coming to our world, that long-awaited Savior, the Messiah of God, the gift of salvation that God has sent to all the world. During this season of Advent, we watch and we wait and we prepare for new beginnings as we begin this new church year. Well, you know, as, as you know, we just couldn't wait for our Advent to get here at Our Savior, so we've actually been celebrating Advent for the past three weeks, kind of like a kid that just can't, can't wait for Christmas, picks up a present under a tree and shakes it to try and figure out what it is. We just, we couldn't wait for Advent, so we started early. Now, for those of you who are a little bit, well, you're worried about that, don't worry about it at all. I want to reassure you that we really didn't do anything wrong by starting a bit early. And let me just give you this morning for fun just a little historical perspective. Today it is true in most churches the season of Advent is only four weeks long, beginning on the Sunday closest to St. Andrew's Day on November 30th. The observance of Advent began in the 4th century, and the duration of the season varied from four to seven weeks long. 
So we're not the first ones to start early this season of Advent. It wasn't until the 6th century that the Bishop of Rome set the season at four weeks. So, I don't know, seven or four weeks, really doesn't matter. It's kind of one of those gray areas, you know, that we can do, well, sort of what we want. So breathe easy. We're off the hook again for another year, starting Advent early. That's just a fun fact I thought you might enjoy this morning. Regardless of how long the season of Advent is, the important thing to remember is that Advent is a season in the life of the church unlike any other. One that we look forward to for many different reasons. Most importantly, Advent reminds us that we as children of God live in a time in between the coming of the Son of Humanity to our world. We not only look back during the season of Advent, we look forward to Jesus coming to our world. What exactly does that mean for us? Jesus coming to our world. And what does it mean for us to be in the in-between time as we reflect upon these ways in which God comes to us? Well, perhaps that's kind of what Matthew's, or Mark's gospel excuse me, is trying to talk to us about this morning, trying to teach us, help us to understand again what this season of Advent is all about. In Mark's Gospel today, Jesus is reminding his listeners to watch and to be ready for the coming of the Son of Humanity to our world. But of that day or of that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So take heed and watch, for you do not know when that time will come. The style of writing that, that Mark is using today in his, his gospel is called apocalyptic writing. It's a style meaning, well, the end of time, the final days of creation, a time when all of the things that we know and understand will come to an end and a whole new beginning will be ushered in by the coming of the Son of Humanity to our world. Apocalyptic writings can be a bit scary because if we interpret them wrong, well, we soon get off track and we turn what is meant to be hope into fear. Throughout the centuries, false prophets have used these writings to mislead God's people by painting a picture of God that Scripture never intended for us to imagine. Whether these misguided prophets did this to scare people into heaven, or just to achieve their own self-serving goals, whatever it is, these apocalyptic end-of-time stories that the biblical writers use were never meant to bring us fear and dread. On the contrary, these stories, like all of Scripture, are meant to give us hope in the midst of a confusing and frightening world. I mean, think about it. Think about it. The Son of Humanity that Scripture speaks of is Jesus. Jesus. Now what images of Jesus do the Scripture stories use to describe who Jesus is to us? Do these stories from Scripture paint for us a picture of Jesus coming to destroy God's good creation? Or to save it? What images of Jesus, again, will we see during these four remaining weeks of Advent? Stories of fear or stories of hope? What do these stories have to teach us, again, of the coming of Jesus to our world and the coming of Jesus to us? During these next four weeks of Advent, we will hear again the Old Testament prophecies foretelling Christ's birth. And we'll be encouraged through these stories and through our gospel readings to remember the images of who Jesus is and how Jesus came to our world long ago and how he will come to our world again someday. But perhaps most importantly, we will hear stories of how Jesus comes to us each day, each day in those in-between times of life. As Scripture will begin to take us back to the beginning, we remember how God brought forth creation, how God, God's creation fell, and how God immediately set into plan motions, the plans that would restore 
God's good creation to what it was created to be. We will remember how God worked through a nation to bring hope to a people who suffered repeatedly, oftentimes because of their own rebellious nature. And through the prophets of old, we will hear stories of how God reminded the people of the covenant God made with them through their ancestor Abraham. A covenant broken time and time again by them, but never by God. And it is this covenant that would guide them through the centuries to a son born humbly in a stable in Bethlehem. A surprising way indeed in which God would bring hope and salvation to our world, but then doesn't God often arise in un- arrive in unexpected and surprising ways? Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the time will come. Advent is a time that prepares us for the coming of God's Messiah to our world unexpectedly. But just when, just how, well, that perhaps is the greatest mystery of all. Soon it will be Christmas. It is getting close. We will hear that story of the birth of Jesus again, an event that happened long ago that still shapes our lives and the world that we live in. But as we prepare to hear that story of the birth of Jesus, Advent reminds us that this story also wants us to look backwards and to remember. Remember the whole story of how God created things good and God continues to create things good over and over again. We will remember about how when the time was right, God sent His Son to us to show us just how much we are loved and just how far God would go to bring hope and healing to God's good creation again. A timeless story of God with us always in all things. That Son of God came to our world and and grew and reminded the people of the stories of old. Along the way, the son would speak of a time when he would come again. One last time, at the end of time, to make all things new. Again, a story of hope and of God's great love. The coming of God to us that Scripture speaks of is not something for us to fear, but to long for with all our heart, for it is a day of great rejoicing indeed. Jesus calls for us to wait for this day and to watch for it, for we do not know when that day will come, but it will come. And what I say to all of you is watch. Watch. A beautiful season indeed. A time to remember the past. A time to anticipate the future. These are the things of Advent. But what does that mean? One more time for you. What does all of this mean? What does it mean to you in these in-between times between the past and the present? What do all of these stories say to us as we begin yet another year of waiting in the life of the church? We must remember that all of these stories are stories of faith. Faith. Stories of things that we cannot fully see or fully understand. I mean, none of us were there when God breathed life into creation and called it good. None of us were there when Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Those first cries of a newborn baby were heard by all of creation. None of us knows exactly what the future holds when Jesus will come again and make all things new. We just, we don't know, but we believe. All these things that Advent speaks of are stories of faith. Things we can only believe in through the power of the Spirit of God that lives within us. As Paul writes, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Stories of faith from God's holy word that creep into our world in these in-between times of life 
for us that are all too real. Into our world where faith sometimes is a hard thing to hang on to. We live in a world where our past reminds us that our lives are anything but perfect. There are things from our past that we would love to forget about ourselves or about others, but we cannot. They are just forever a part of who we are. We live in a world where no one knows what the future holds. The uncertainty of tomorrow and what it will bring sometimes shakes us to the core, leaving us dreading the future and what it might hold for us. We live in a world where we sometimes wonder if these stories of faith that we cling to are, are real, or if they're strong enough to see us through another day. We live in a world much like the writers of Scripture lived in. You see, they weren't so different than the rest of us. And yet, during this season of Advent, we are reminded again of a promise that has been the strength of God's people from the very beginning. God has not come and gone. God is with us in all of time, especially in these in-between times of life when sometimes we can find ourselves feeling very much alone. In those times when we wonder where God is. Jesus reminds us today to watch and to be ready for the coming to, of God to us each day. Each day. For God is not the God of the past. And God is not just some God that waits off in the distant future for us someday. God is already here with you. With you always. Remember that during this holy season. There is no place that you can go where God hasn't already come to be with you. This is what Advent reminds us of. This is the hope that binds us together in love. And this is the reassurance we need, not just for four or seven weeks out of a year, but for the entire year. For all the year, for each and every day of our lives. Those in-between times when God is with you. Thanks be to God, the God of all times and in all places. Thanks be to God for the stories of Advent. Amen.